the shy piano boy becomes a superstar. Can you believe that Elton John, the genius behind Rocket Man and your song, once came close to ending it all? Just days before his legendary performance at Dodger Stadium in 1975, Elton made a shocking attempt on his own life. How does a shy kid from a quiet town near London, with a strained relationship with his parents, become the Elton John, the most flamboyant, unforgettable performer the world has ever seen? For Reginald Dwight, growing up in Pinner wasn't glamorous. His father was cold, distant, and the scars of that childhood would haunt him long after he took on his glittering new identity. Becoming Elton John wasn't just about a new name. It was a full reinvention, a dazzling escape from the pain of his past. But behind the wild costumes, the sequins, and the larger-than-life persona, the shy boy from Pinner never truly disappeared. Elton craved the spotlight, but what he really needed was approval, a hunger that fame alone couldn't satisfy. Elton's need for approval and his extravagant lifestyle were direct results of his childhood pain. The more famous he became, the more he struggled to cope with his inner demons. Behind the sequins, a life of addiction. As Elton's fame skyrocketed, so did his appetite for destruction. The glittering outfits, the hit songs, they masked a grim truth. Elton was on a dangerous spiral, one that nearly consumed him completely. Just how close did the Rocket Man come to burning out? Beneath the bright lights and standing ovations, Elton was battling crippling personal insecurities. Fame brought pressure, and Elton's way of coping? Drugs. Lots of them. As his songs climbed the charts, his life was falling apart behind closed doors. The same boy from Pinner who once craved approval was now trapped in a deadly cycle of addiction. Elton's drug of choice? Cocaine. And not in small doses. He once confessed, I'd have an epileptic seizure, turn blue, and people would just put me to bed. Forty minutes later, I'd be snorting another line. The addiction was relentless, taking over his life, his health, and his career. But that wasn't the only demon Elton was fighting. Behind the scenes, he struggled with bulimia, a dangerous eating disorder. His bulimia and drug use combined into a perfect storm of self-destruction, pushing his body and mind to their limits. The extent of Elton's addictions was shocking. He once admitted to using cocaine every four minutes for extended periods. This reckless behavior led to several near-death experiences. One particularly harrowing incident occurred in 1975 when Elton overdosed during a concert at Dodger Stadium. Despite the gravity of the situation, he finished the show, highlighting the grip his addictions had on him and the lengths he would go to maintain his public persona. Elton's drug use wasn't just affecting his health, it was also impacting his music. While he continued to produce hit songs, his addiction often overshadowed his creative process. He would write and record while high, leading to erratic behavior in the studio and on stage. The once shy pianist had transformed into an unpredictable diva, known for his tantrums as much as his talent. The turning point came in 1990 when Elton had a particularly frightening near-death experience. He was found choking on his own vomit, a result of his bulimia and drug use. This incident finally pushed him to seek help. Elton checked into a rehabilitation center, beginning the long and challenging journey to sobriety. Elton's battle with addiction and his road to recovery deeply influenced his music. Songs like The One and Recover Your Soul reflect this turbulent period in his life. The One, released in 1992, was Elton's first hit single after getting sober. The lyrics speak of finding hope and love after a dark period, mirroring Elton's own journey to recovery. Another song that captures Elton's struggle is I'm Still Standing. While it was released before his recovery, the song took on new meaning after Elton got sober. It became an anthem of resilience, celebrating his survival and triumph over addiction. Elton's openness about his addictions has helped break down stigmas surrounding substance abuse and mental health issues. In recent years, he's become an advocate for addiction recovery, using his platform to raise awareness and support others struggling with similar issues. Despite the damage his addictions caused, Elton managed to emerge from this dark period with his career intact. His journey from the depths of addiction to sobriety is a testament to his resilience and determination. It also adds a layer of depth and authenticity to his music, allowing fans to connect with him on a more personal level. Love, marriage, and coming out. Elton's battle with addiction wasn't his only fight. 
Just as he started to climb out of that dark hole, he found himself facing something even more personal, his own identity. What could drive a man like Elton John, known for his flamboyance and fearlessness, to hide his true self behind a marriage that was destined to fail? The answer, a complex mix of societal pressure and deep-rooted fear. In the 1970s and 80s, being openly gay in the entertainment industry was risky. Despite Elton's wild stage persona, the real Elton felt trapped, trapped by expectations, by fear of backlash, and by a world that wasn't ready for the truth. So, in 1984, Elton shocked the world. He married Renate Blauel, a sound engineer. To everyone watching, this decision seemed confusing. Why would Elton, who'd had relationships with men, suddenly marry a woman? The truth was, it wasn't about love. It was about trying to fix something that wasn't broken. Elton later admitted that it was a desperate attempt to conform, to fit into the mold the world wanted for him. But deep down, even as he walked down the aisle, he knew it was a mistake. That marriage wasn't just difficult for Elton, it left deep emotional scars on Renati too. But the truth couldn't be hidden forever. The marriage was a struggle from the start, with Elton later admitting that he knew it was a mistake even as he walked down the aisle. The emotional toll on both Elton and Renati was immense. Elton's substance abuse worsened during this period as he tried to cope with living a lie. Renati, too, suffered greatly. In recent years, she has spoken about the pain and trauma she experienced during and after their marriage. She described feeling like someone that had been run over, highlighting the devastating impact of being part of a relationship built on false pretenses. The end of the marriage in 1988 marked a turning point for Elton. It forced him to confront his true identity and set him on the path to publicly coming out as gay. In a 1988 interview with Rolling Stone, Elton finally acknowledged his sexuality, stating, I'm comfortable being gay. This admission was a watershed moment, not just for Elton, but for the music industry and LGBTQ plus representation in popular culture. It was a brave step, especially considering the potential backlash and impact on his career. However, Elton's honesty was met with widespread support from fans and fellow artists alike. Coming out allowed Elton to live authentically for the first time in his life. It had a profound impact on his music, relationships, and overall well-being. Songs like The Last Song and Believe took on new meanings, reflecting Elton's journey of self-acceptance and his advocacy for LGBTQ rights. Elton's struggles with his sexuality and the pain of his short-lived marriage inspired some of his most poignant and personal songs. Believe, released in 1995, speaks to the power of self-acceptance and love. The lyrics, I believe in love, it's all we got, take on a deeper meaning when viewed through the lens of Elton's personal journey. Another song that captures this period of Elton's life is The Last Song, which he wrote about a young man dying of AIDS. This powerful ballad not only raised awareness about the AIDS crisis, but also reflected Elton's growing comfort with addressing LGBTQ issues in his music. Elton's coming out also paved the way for greater acceptance and representation in the music industry. He became a role model for many LGBTQ artists who followed, showing that it was possible to be open about one's sexuality and still maintain a successful career in the spotlight. In the years since coming out, Elton has become a vocal advocate for LGBTQ rights. He's used his platform to raise awareness, fight discrimination, and support organizations working for equality. His Elton John AIDS Foundation, established in 1992, has raised millions of dollars for HIV AIDS prevention and treatment. Friendships, loss, and redemption. Elton's fight for equality was admirable, but behind closed doors, he was losing a battle with his inner demons. The loss of a music legend would send him spiraling into his darkest days yet. How did the death of a fellow icon become both Elton's lowest point and his ultimate lifeline? Elton's life was filled with wild highs and crushing lows, and his friendships were no different. One of his closest relationships was with none other than John Lennon. The two music legends bonded over their shared love for music and their struggles with the price of fame. In 1974, they even created magic together, collaborating on the hit song, Whatever Gets You Through the Night. But on December 8, 1980, tragedy struck. John Lennon was shot and killed outside his New York apartment. For Elton, it was like the ground had been ripped out from under him. He was devastated. His friend, 
his collaborator, gone in an instant. The grief was unbearable. In his own words, Elton said, When John Lennon died, I thought, I've got to clean up my act. But instead, his life spiraled further out of control. He buried his pain in drugs and alcohol, sinking deeper into addiction as he tried to escape the reality of losing one of his dearest friends. The loss of Lennon wasn't just a personal tragedy for Elton. It also had a profound impact on his music. Many of his songs from this period reflect his grief and struggles. Empty Garden, Hey Hey Johnny, released in 1982, was a heartfelt tribute to Lennon. The lyrics paint a picture of loss and longing. What happened here as the New York sunset disappeared? Elton's mental health took a nosedive during this time. He struggled with depression and continued to battle his addictions. The bright, flamboyant star that the public saw on stage was a far cry from the broken man behind the scenes. But Elton's story isn't just one of loss and pain. It's also a tale of redemption and the power of friendship. In 1993, Elton formed an unlikely bond with Princess Diana. Despite their different backgrounds, the two connected over their shared experiences of fame and personal struggles. Their friendship became a bright spot in Elton's life. Diana's warmth and compassion helped him through some of his darkest times. When Diana tragically died in a car crash in 1997, Elton was once again devastated. But this time, instead of spiraling into addiction, he channeled his grief into something positive. Elton performed a reworked version of Candle in the Wind at Diana's funeral. The song, originally written about Marilyn Monroe, became a tribute to the People's Princess. It was a moving moment that touched millions around the world. The performance marked a turning point for Elton. He later said, I really thought that was it. It couldn't get any bigger than that. The experience of losing Diana and honoring her memory pushed Elton to confront his own mortality and the damage his addictions were causing. Elton's relationships with John Lennon and Princess Diana had a lasting impact on his music and his public image. Songs like Empty Garden and Candle in the Wind 1997 became some of his most beloved and emotionally resonant works. They showcased a more vulnerable side of Elton, one that connected deeply with his audience. These friendships and losses also shaped Elton's approach to his career and his life. He became more involved in charitable work, particularly in the fight against AIDS. The Elton John AIDS Foundation, which he established in 1992, has raised millions of dollars for HIV prevention and treatment. Elton's journey through friendship, loss, and redemption is a testament to his resilience. It shows how even in the darkest times, there can be a glimmer of hope. The pain of losing his friends pushed Elton to confront his own demons and ultimately led him on a path to recovery and renewed purpose. The Road to Recovery As Elton stepped onto the path of recovery, he uncovered a side of himself the world had never seen. How did sobriety change the flamboyant superstar? And what unexpected purpose did it bring to his life? Elton's journey to sobriety wasn't just a turning point, it was a lifeline. After years of spiraling deeper into addiction, in 1990, he finally made the decision to seek help. But getting sober wasn't easy. It forced Elton to face the one thing he'd been avoiding all along, himself. What pushed him to that point? A terrifying near-death experience. Elton found himself choking on his own vomit, his body wrecked from drug use and bulimia. That moment was his wake-up call. He knew that if he didn't make a change, he wouldn't survive. So, he checked into rehab, ready to confront his demons head-on. Early recovery wasn't pretty, it was raw. Without drugs or alcohol to dull the pain, Elton had to face all the insecurities and trauma he'd buried for so long. But with every step, he found something new. A sense of self-worth, a purpose beyond the fame, and a strength he didn't even know he had. Sobriety changed Elton's approach to music and performance in profound ways. Without the haze of drugs and alcohol, he found a new clarity and focus in his work. His performances became more consistent and powerful. He no longer needed to rely on substances to boost his confidence or creativity. One of the most significant changes in Elton's life after getting sober was his dedication to helping others. He became a vocal advocate for AIDS awareness and research. This cause gave him a new sense of purpose beyond his music career. Elton's advocacy work was deeply personal. He had lost many friends to AIDS, including Queen frontman Freddie Mercury. In 1992, he established the Elton John AIDS Foundation, 
which has since raised millions of dollars for HIV prevention and treatment programs around the world. This new focus on helping others had a profound impact on Elton's music. His songwriting became more introspective and socially conscious. Songs like The Last Song and American Triangle tackled issues related to AIDS and homophobia, reflecting Elton's growth as both an artist and an activist. Elton's recovery also influenced his relationship with his fans. He became more open about his struggles, using his platform to raise awareness about addiction and mental health. This honesty created a deeper connection with his audience, who appreciated his vulnerability and authenticity. The sober Elton John was a far cry from the out-of-control rock star of the 1970s and 80s. He traded in his wild parties for quiet nights at home and focused on rebuilding relationships that had been damaged during his years of addiction. One of the most surprising aspects of Elton's recovery was how it affected his creativity. Many artists worry that sobriety will dull their creative edge, but for Elton, it had the opposite effect. He found that he could tap into his emotions more easily without the numbing effects of drugs and alcohol. This newfound clarity led to some of the most critically acclaimed work of Elton's career. Albums like The One and Made in England showcased a more mature and reflective artist. His collaboration with lyricist Bernie Taupin also deepened, resulting in some of their most poignant and personal songs. Elton's journey to sobriety wasn't without its challenges. He faced moments of doubt and temptation, especially in the early years, but he found strength in his support system, including his partner, now husband, David Furnish, who stood by him through thick and thin. The impact of Elton's recovery extended beyond his personal life and career. He became a role model for others struggling with addiction, proving that it's never too late to turn your life around. His openness about his struggles helped reduce the stigma surrounding addiction and mental health issues. Elton's advocacy work also led him to form unexpected friendships and alliances. He worked closely with Princess Diana on AIDS awareness campaigns, a partnership that would have a lasting impact on both their lives. Fatherhood and a New Chapter Despite the fame, the fortune, and even his powerful bond with Princess Diana, Elton couldn't shake the feeling that something was missing. What could possibly be missing from the life of a man who seemed to have it all? The answer came in the most unexpected form, two little boys who would completely change his world. Becoming a father was anything but conventional for Elton. While others his age were retiring, Elton was stepping into the most challenging and rewarding role of his life, being a dad. But the journey to fatherhood wasn't smooth. Elton and his partner, David Furnish, faced obstacle after obstacle. As a same-sex couple, many countries refused to even consider them as parents. The process was long, disheartening, and filled with setbacks. But Elton and David wouldn't give up. And in 2010, their persistence paid off when they welcomed their first son, Zachary, into their lives. Despite the setbacks, Elton and David persevered. Their determination paid off in 2010 when they welcomed their first son, Zachary, via surrogate. Two years later, they expanded their family with the arrival of Elijah. Becoming a father in his 60s was a life-changing experience for Elton. The man who once lived for the spotlight now found his greatest joy in quiet moments at home with his boys. Having children changed everything about my life, Elton said in a 2016 interview. I thought I was too old to be a dad, but it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Fatherhood brought a new perspective to Elton's life and career. The wild parties and extravagant lifestyle of his younger years were replaced by school runs and bedtime stories. Elton embraced this new chapter with gusto, relishing the simple pleasures of family life. But balancing fame with fatherhood wasn't always easy. Elton's busy touring schedule often kept him away from home for long periods. He struggled with guilt over missing important moments in his children's lives. This internal conflict led to some major career decisions. In 2018, Elton announced his farewell tour, aptly named Farewell Yellow Brick Road. The decision to step back from touring was largely influenced by his desire to spend more time with his family. My priorities have changed, Elton explained. I have young children who need me, and that's more important than anything else. Elton's approach to parenting is a far cry from his own upbringing. Having experienced a difficult relationship with his own father, Elton was determined to break the cycle. He and David have made a conscious effort to create a loving, supportive environment for their boys. 
the impact of fatherhood on Elton's music has been profound. His later albums feature more introspective, emotional songs that reflect his new role as a parent. The 2016 album Wonderful Crazy Night includes several tracks inspired by his experiences as a father, showcasing a softer, more vulnerable side of the rock icon. Elton's journey to parenthood hasn't been without its challenges. The couple has faced criticism and prejudice from those who disapprove of same-sex parenting. But Elton has remained steadfast in his belief that love, not gender, is what makes a family. The decision to become a father later in life has also meant confronting his own mortality. Elton has spoken openly about his fears of not being around to see his children grow up. This concern has fueled his commitment to maintaining his health and sobriety. Despite the challenges, Elton's late-in-life fatherhood has brought him a sense of fulfillment he never thought possible. I thought I had it all, he once said, but I didn't have anything until I had my boys. Elton's experience as a father has also influenced his philanthropic work. He has become an outspoken advocate for LGBTQ plus families, using his platform to challenge discrimination and promote acceptance. His Elton John AIDS Foundation has expanded its focus to include support for LGBTQ plus parents and their children. The Legacy of the Rocket Man Elton John's journey from a shy boy and pinner to a global superstar is more than just a story of fame, it's a story of survival. The battles he fought against addiction, his sexuality, and his own self-doubt didn't just shape his music, they gave it depth, meaning, and emotion. When you listen to songs like Your Song or I'm Still Standing, you're not just hearing hits, you're hearing a man who's been to the edge and back. Elton didn't just change music, he changed the world. By coming out in the 1980s, he shattered barriers in an industry where being openly gay was still taboo. He became a beacon of hope for millions in the LGBTQ community. And with his Elton John AIDS Foundation, he's raised millions to fight one of the biggest health crises of our time. But let's not forget, that fame came at a heavy price. His battles with drugs and alcohol nearly destroyed him. Yet, against all odds, Elton fought his way back, stronger, more resilient, and more determined than ever. His recovery and his later-in-life fatherhood prove that it's never too late to rewrite your story. Today, Elton John's legacy is so much more than hit songs. It's a legacy of resilience, of redemption, and of the power that comes from living your truth, no matter the cost. He showed the world that you can fall, but you can also rise again. And in the end, that's what makes Elton John more than a superstar. It makes him a survivor.